what's going on everybody welcome back to my youtube channel look at this nice and beautiful question on the board that we're going to be solving and the question says find the value of x for which x squared minus 2 all raised to the power of 2 is equal to x plus 2 well our first step will be for us to expand this expression. This expression is in the form of a plus b to the power of 2. And this is equal to a squared plus 2ab, 2ab, and then plus b squared, b squared. So let's expand this in this form. So this becomes x squared raised to the power of 2 plus 2a which is x squared b which is negative 2 plus negative 2 squared. Well our x squared is in the form of a and our negative 2 is in the form of b and we've been able to write this in this form to get this equal to x plus 2 our next step will be for us to simplify so from indices powers multiply so 2 times 2 gives 4 so I have x to the fourth now 2 times x squared times negative 2, I have negative 4x squared plus negative 2 squared is 4 equal to x plus 2. Well, our next step will be for us to move what we have on the right hand side to the left hand side so that we have x to the fourth minus 4x squared now when x crosses to the left it becomes negative x i've already got plus 4 here and as 2 crosses to the left becomes minus 2 equal to 0. now simplify further we have x to the fourth minus 4x squared minus x now 4 minus 2 gives plus 2 and this is equal to 0. Our next step will be for us to factor out x squared from these first two terms. Noticing that x squared is common here. So factor out x squared. Now x to the fourth divided by x squared. I have x squared minus... 4x squared divided by x squared, I have 4 minus x plus 2, so minus x plus 2 is equal to 0. Now, our next step will be for us to simplify what I have inside of this parenthesis. Now, I have x squared times x squared minus, now 4 is the same thing as 2 squared minus x plus 2 equal to 0. Now notice that this is in a form of difference of 2 squares. So difference of 2 squares has a property of a squared minus b squared which is same as a plus b times a minus b so let's apply this property to what we have here so this is x squared times the property of difference of two squared x plus two times x minus two so i have been able to apply the property of difference of two square here to get this now here I'm going to be factoring out negative, so negative out. So since I factor out negative, 
this expression becomes x minus 2. Since negative is outside of this parenthesis, it changes this plus to minus equal to 0. Now notice that x minus 2 is common. So we can factor out x minus 2. So x minus 2 factored out. Now what do I have here? So x squared times x plus 2 times x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. I'm going to have what I have here, which is x squared times x plus 2 minus x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. I'm going to have 1 equal to 0. So our next step will be for us to open up this bracket. So we have x minus 2 times now x squared times x is x to the 3 which is x cubed plus x squared times 2 is 2x squared minus 1 equal to 0. So we have two cases. We have x minus 2 to be equal to 0 or this expression which is x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and solve these two cases one after the other. So for our case 1, which is the first case, we have x minus 2 to be equal to 0. So the value of x will be equal to, as negative 2 crosses to the right, it becomes plus 2. Now for our second case, let's call this case 2. This is when x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. In order to make this expression factorizable, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So we have x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1. Remember, we want to add 1 to both sides. So plus 1 equal to 1. Our next step will be for us to move this one on the right hand side to the left hand side so that we have x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 equal to 0. Our next step will be for us to move this one plus 1 closer to x cubed. So we have x cubed plus 1. Now plus 2x squared. Now what I have left is negative 1, negative 1, which gives negative 2 equal to 0. So simplifying further, we have x cubed plus 1 plus now notice that 2 is common from here so we can factor out 2 so bring out 2 now 2x squared divided by 2 I've got x squared minus 2 divided by 2 I've got 1 equal to 0 so equal to 0 so looking at these first two terms this can be written as x cubed plus 1 cube because 1 cube is still the same thing as 1 plus 2. Now, looking at these other two terms, this can be written as x squared minus 1 squared because 1 squared is the same thing as 1 as well, equal to 0. So this is sum of two cubes and this is difference of two squares. So the property of sum of two cubes is a cubed plus b cubed and this is equal to a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. 
why the property of difference of two squares is a squared minus b squared. This is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So let's apply these properties to what we have here. First, we go with the one of sum of two cubes. Our x takes the form of a and our one, this one here, takes the form of b. So writing this in this form, we have a does x plus b does one times a is x, so that's x squared minus a b means a times b so one times x is x plus b squared that's one squared one squared is one plus two now this is the difference of two squares and which we're going to be writing in this form x takes the form of a and one takes the form of b so we're going to be having x plus 1 times x minus 1 equal to 0. Now notice that x plus 1 is common. So let's factor out x plus 1. So x plus 1 factored out. Now this expression divided by x plus 1, I'll have this, which is x squared minus x plus 1 plus this expression divide by x plus 1 I'll have 2 times x minus 1 so 2 times x minus 1 equal to 0 our next step will be for us to simplify what we have inside of this bracket so we have x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. Now use this 2 to open up the bracket. So 2 times x, I'm going to have 2x minus 2 times 1 is 2 equal to 0. Now simplifying further, we have x plus 1 times x squared so this is negative x plus 2x so negative x plus 2x gives plus x right cool now 1 minus 2 is negative 1 equal to 0 so we have yet another two cases we have x plus 1 equal to 0 and we have x squared plus x equal to 0 Let's continue on the next slide. So for our first case, case 1, we've got x plus 1 to be equal to 0. And our case 2, we've got x squared plus x minus 1 to be equal to 0. So for the first case, the value of x will be equal to move 1 to the right hand side we have negative 1 so this is the second value of x that we've got so call this x sub 2 now for this second case we have a quadratic expression and we're going to be using the quadratic formula to solve this from here a is equal to the coefficient of x squared and that's 1 b is equal to the coefficient of x which is also 1 and c is equal to the constant term which is negative 1 and since we're looking for x so this is x we're looking for the third and fourth value of x so this is equal to using the quadratic formula negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a so let's substitute into this quadratic formula. So x of 3, 4 will be equal to negative b. That's negative b is 1 plus or minus the square root 
of b squared, that's 1 squared, minus 4 times a, a is 1, times c, c is negative 1, all over 2 times a, which is 1. So x will be equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared is 1. Now, I've got negative 4 times 1 times negative 1 gives plus 4. All over 2 times 1 is 2. So the value of x now becomes negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 4 gives 5. All over 2. Now let's separate these values. So x of 3, which is a third value for x, is equal to negative 1 plus, that means we're taking the plus first, root 5 over 2. And then the last value for x, which is x of 4, is equal to negative 1. This time, we take the negative, negative root 5 over 2. So there are four solutions for x. Well, feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.